Alright, hello everyone. It is me, I am Disturbia, and for today we're gonna have a match from the week 8. It is going to be Genkai Code against X Factors, two teams from Japan originally. Both of them actually have the same score, but you can see it's not the same round differential. So Genkai Code has a lead of 13 points compared to X Factors, but what's also going to matter is going to be how many games you win and that match is going to be pretty important for both teams so we'll see how this is going to go we're gonna have Kanzawa on top so it is going to be the start of for Genkai code and okay gold rush is going to be the start on the opposing side all right we're just gonna go straight in guys Hajime Good luck to both teams on today's war, and as usual, I'll do my best for the commentary. Alright, so let's see what they bring. So Yugi Mudo on the bottom, and Shark on top. So Water or Crystal on top, I will say mainly Water due to the meta. On the bottom, it could still be a Harpy, the Tyler Bins, or the Gaia. Alright, so Gold Rush is going to have the start, guess the Diva. Classic combo, classic turn. Uses territory of the shark immediately. And that's gonna be an Abyss Dweller on the field. And that is it, he's gonna pass a turn. He's still looking fine, but it does depend on the cause that Kanzawa has. Openings are sometimes openings, so some cards will affect the other one. So like for example, if you use Book of Moon, it is going to allow you to go and chain a lot of effects because the opposing monster cannot really chain etc so let's see what is he going to do all right so he does use the book of moon immediately Yeah, he does good. Just in case, use the effect of the Abyss Dweller. And that is actually going to be Harpies the Tithe Bends. So, if he has any card to chain against the back throw, it could be GG. Alright, so he allows the draw for Kanzawa, who is going to search for Rest. Are going immediately with the Swallow's Nest here, so he's gonna swap Performer with another one, and it is going to be Channeler what he goes with. So, so far he's very confident. There's one issue though, and it's going to be if there's any Treacherous Trap Hole that could be quite some damage on Kanzawa. But if he has the second Malevolent Sin, he can still get back to it. So, let's see. He has two monsters on the field, gets the Oracle. And he actually is going to go for the Synchro. And no chain. So it goes with a free Feather Rest. Which is going to allow Kanzawa to draw for two cards next. And he is also deciding to use the effect right now. So he will bounce the card. It goes through. Alright, it's not going to be lethal, he sets two cards. But that's still going to be a free attack here for Kanzawa. And with the effect of Oracle, gets back the Feather Rest. Now for Feather Rest, of course you can use the card if you want to draw cards back. Uh, like if you want to put cards from the graveyard back to the deck. But there's also another usage and it is going to be 
uh, discarding the card, for example, to use the effect of Channeler if you want to be able to special summon a, another Harpy. So MST is going to be used on the right, destroys Historic Party. And he opens another Deva. Ooh la la. Right, also gets to use the effect of infantry, so it's gonna normal summon again. And he does have quite a lot of monsters. New bugs dex bug. We will see though. I do know. I mean, I don't. I don't know if actually we've seen yet in Team Wars, but I know, for example, in another league that there was. Oh my God! Nothing changed. Well. That's going to be lethal for water, and that also means that it's going to be the first point for X Factors. And hello to you, Saifedean. But yeah, what I was about to say is that I've seen some people play uh, DDD on another league, and specifically Latam Wars. There's a team that won some games uh, with the deck. Which was pretty interesting for sure, and there's also the fact that the new version of the deck is actually... How should I say? It's pretty finicky. And that's the DDD combined with Stromberg. This one I think is like... To me, as a deck, it's probably one of the most ridiculous things I've seen in a long time. And we're gonna go with the next duel. So let's just hop in. And let me just see if there was any repeat. No repeat. They go for the second deck and that's gonna be Zuzu Boil. So melodious. Unless they do want to troll me like another team did, which means it could be Linda Light, Master of Fusion, but we'll see. So 21 cards on the bottom, on the side of Kanazawa. First turn goes again for Gold Rush. Well, I don't really think that's the main reason, say, for the concerning DD combined with Stromberg, because... The main purpose of that is to, how should I say, like the castle, of course it is to protect yourself from any battle phase and they need to use specific monsters to dodge from being destroyed if they try to attack. But it's mainly to be able to stall, I'd say. But it sure is interesting. Actually, I guess you're right, Safe Dean. Because then there is uh, another consideration to take in, which is the skill that you use for the deck, because it allows you to skip standby phase, and that is the huge point of the skill. <laughs> so many can jumps already. The water is actually opening very good right now. Although, I don't know if Marksman is a good thing to have on the field, but it's still going to be a second monster on the field, so... Shall I say it is fine? I guess yes. Alright, so instant... Solo movement. Alright, he's gonna not use the effect yet. He lets the skill go through. So, from Song Stress to Maestro. Gets the chopping on the field. The Abyss Roller is gonna chain immediately. Probably another for water. We will see though. Because it's also the fact that it matters um, what timing you want to use the card. He used it immediately on the level 7 though. Which. Is it going to be enough? Because right now Kanzawa has a setup to make a fusion. He will be able to go for Schubertoff. And he's going to want to go for Schubertoff for sure. It's just to at least go above the Abyss Dweller and destroy it. Else he can go for the Marksman if he wants. Alright, so using the effect of Soprano is about to make the fusion. Yeah, exactly. That's something you could stop. Although... One thing into consideration is, if you wanted to stop any fusion, you will destroy Soprano, for example, because it's the card that allows you to make fusion 
unless you're playing the spell that allows you to make the fusion, which is not a Stinato, because it's a different kind of card. Like it says, if you have no monsters on the field, then make a fusion. But there's another one, uh, which is a spell continuous, allowing you to either boost a monster for 800 attack or tribute this spell, then make a fusion. So either way, that was still pretty good. Oh man, smashing ground. Ooh. That was very interesting. Smashing Grot out of all the cards, I've not expected to see that. And he gets a monster on the field. We'll do another skill again. Oh my Jesus. It's not over though. Because it still depends what is the card that Kanzawa has. So he's going to have to read a bit. It depends on who he goes for. But that's going to be very interesting what choice he is going to go in. Yeah, Necrofusion or TTH, exactly. It's one of the two. I still have a feeling that it is going to be Necrofusion eventually. Alright, he's going to go for Hope Woven. Which will be just in case it is a, a creature's trap hole. Alright, attacking with the Abyss Dweller and Necrofusion is going to be used right now. This is going to allow Kanzawa to take a bit more time. Make another fusion. And at that point, I do think he's going to go for the Blom Diva. It makes a lot of sense at that exact point of the game. Alright, we let the flower shine here. So now he's going to be able to destroy some muscle on the field pretty easily. Let's see, he goes for the Hope Woven. Which is still a fair choice here because all he cares is to be able to destroy the whole woman. Because it had like some overlays. But of course one thing is if you destroy the monster, he can actually get back one of the monsters. Which will allow later on for Gold Rush to make another XEs. Although I think at that point of the game, Gold Rush is gonna have a hard time to defeat the Bloom Diva. Because I believe there's no card for water that you can use to destroy it. And that's a question of matchup at that point. Yeah, exactly, j -Pop. So, well, not only Forbidden Chalice, you know. But, indeed, it will be the best card here because you negate the effect. But there is also another way, which I think now is not possible because Mark's Money is in the graveyard. But if you had Mark's Money in one of your monsters, one of your XC's monsters... And the Blum Diva is phase down. You can actually use the effect to discard the Marksman, destroy the phase down. That will still be fine. But eventually, yes, Forbidden Chalice, definitely the best bet for Gold Rush. Yeah, Light Mirror is also another thing, but of course, depends if they wanted to go for like some sub. Uh, not sub, but. Side cards. Which I guess we could still see some. You either needed to draw level 4 to DBL Shark Star or Mate Prior. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. I actually forgot that he could still have Droning. But does he play one? I don't know. Alright, so he has set a new card on the field. He has two spell traps. Maybe he's thinking what to do depending on the monster it is. If it is, for example, another diva that he has in hand. And he's going to go for an end turn here. MST going to be used. Destroys a new spell trap, which ends up being a Book of Moon. Another attacking after setting a card. Kanzawa taking the time doesn't need to summon more. In one way, it's also, I guess, to prevent from a TTH. Alright, so Gold Rush setting a card right now. And that's gonna be the turn of Kanzawa.
sending another card. Three spell traps on the side of Kanzawa. His field is getting pretty big while also being able to destroy monsters. And that's gonna be your Marsman destroyed. Well, not really Marsman, sorry. How's it called? The Atlantia the Tank Squad. You could have actually put it in the face of attack position if you want, but of course there's the issue that if there's any score in hand of Kanzawa, that will have been Kanzawa's win. Breakthrough skill going to come in to negate the effect of the shark. And sending another card on the side of Gold Rush. He has a tie though. He's going for the attack rental. And the Book of Moon is going to be forced anyways, so puts the monster back down. So right now he's going to be able to use the effect of Shark. Alright, he does special summon Angler. And that actually gets Book of Moon immediately. Ooh, very fast Screech's Trapple is going to happen. So he's going to be able to tribute the Abyss Angler and also destroys the Diva, which is important here, so he's able to attack. And he goes for the attack, went in, damage is dealt. But there's one big problem, Kenzawa has a big hand, he has 5 cards. So at any point he's going to be able to put monsters back on the field. Reveals the set card, which is going to be a movement solo. And that's going to allow him to special summon Soprano. And because it is special summon, you can get back one of the materials from the graveyard. And he goes for Chopin. Or Shapina, I should say. Also, normal summons the score to make the fusion. But yeah, nonetheless, he knows it is going to be the end. Sherbeta just needs to use the effect, and that is game. Or not. Yes, it is game. He had another score in hand, anyways. 2400 damage. And that's going to be a 1 1 situation we have here, ladies and gentlemen. So now it is going to depend on what is the next deck on Gold Rush's side. Because technically the game of Team Wars is guessing what next decks you will find in general. It's like you try to bet on what's the next deck that will potentially counter my own deck, so let's see. We know Kanzawa has Melodious. One of the best decks will actually be a Harpy in this situation. But let's see what's the next deck on Gold Rush's side. Actually, that's gonna be a mirror match, I believe. Should be a Melodious, but let's see. Yep, 30 cards must be a Melodious 100%. But, Kanzawa is going to have the first turn though. 21 cards versus 30 cards. Let's see who is going to win. The major difference between the two decks is that one deck goes faster and the one goes slower. So 21 cards, you generally play pretty fast. While 30 cards is more about control due to the traps that you play in. And he's gonna open very fast the Ostina though. Very very fast. So he's going to be sending a Mozarta and also sends a Soprano. So he's gonna make a Bloom Diva. 
Fair choice. Oof. Three said it. Oh, that's a massive field. Also, Gold Rush gaining the movement solo, which is going to allow him to special summon from the deck. So here it depends on the hand he has. Yeah. He went for Soprano, so I was about to say he could summon this one, or let's say, how is it called? The Sonata, which is if you want to gain a bit more attack. So Champina being special summoned thanks to the skill, and now he retrieves the Soprano. Actually, this mirror match is going to be pretty difficult on both the sides, but especially Kanzawa due to the fact he's not playing 30 cards. So he doesn't have like a big asset of trap cards. Alright, so two set cards on the side of Gold Rush. And another factor is for why I'm mentioning that it is hard is because you rely a lot on the staples, not really the extra deck or your own monsters, for example. On extra decks, you do want to usually get some Xyz monsters, but you're not able to do so because of the skill. So if you had access to, to Xyz monsters without the restriction, that actually would change the way mirror matches are played. So Necrofusion happening right now, gonna be making a Shuberta. And banishes the material immediately to prevent from a Necrofusion. So now it is going to be the turn of Kanzawa. Decides to pass the turn right now. Setting a card on the side of Gold Rush, passing the turn again. I do have a feeling this game is going to be pretty long because it's a long style until you get the card you want that you think uh, will give you the win. Like passing a turn again on the side of Kanzawa. There's put the Shiverta in a tough position. MSC is going to intervene, destroys the breakthrough skill. And Gold Rush also ends the turn again, does not want to attack or take the bait. From the following Sherberta. And I think that's a wise decision because you don't know all the exact cards that Kanzawa has. And if there's any Forbidden Chalice that, for example, appears, that could be the end for Gold Rush. He gets to special summon the Sonata, so he gets a bit more of attack and puts everyone in the attack position. He's going for the battle phase right now. I 
have no idea what card he has except Forbidden Chalice, that's the one I have in mind. No, he's gonna have Breakthrough Scale, of course, yeah, I'm very stupid. That makes a lot of sense. But then the other Breakthrough Scale is still going to reply. But he gets a score. And the other score is still going to be chained. Goldorf is going to be able to protect a little bit more the Deva. So now it's all about the Staples. Does he have enough to stop? No, he does not. And now it is going to be eventually destroyed. Shobrita is getting so far a free attack. But not yet because Necrofusion is going to be activated right now. That also means another Deva is going to, uh, to appear. No, it's Shubrita. Let me see why. Yeah, it makes sense. He can only do Shubrita actually because it's not considered Maestro. Oh my god, another breakthrough skill. So no, that's going to reduce the attack of the Shubrita. And that also means Shubrita is going to have more attack than the other Shubrita. But actually not yet. The Book of Moon is still going to intervene. Ooh, la, la. That actually is a crazy turn what's going on right now. And Shoberta is still going to take a little bit of adva advantage, sorry. We'll banish some of the cards. But let's see which ones is he going to take though. I believe he's going to banish the Melodious from the opposing side. No, he banishes all the cards from the opposing grave. Fair enough. And because it is flipped up again, he can actually use the effect again. So doing many banish on the side of Gold Rush. Right, so he does get eventually a Soprano, but does he have anything to special summon? That's the question. He does have a Sonata. Right, so making another fusion, going to be another Sherberta. That, I believe, is going to be the second one we see from Gold Rush. And he also sets a card. Yeah, he goes on the battle phase, no choice but tries to attack the Sonata. Return of Kanzo at this time, he has the lead because he does have the most important card in this mirror, and that is actually going to be the Blom Diva. So, at that point, he is going to be able to put so much pressure due to the fact that there's two Schubert on the field, both of them can banish monsters, spells, and traps. But yeah, of course, because you have the Diva attacking first, that will be pretty useless. And Shepard is now attacking, dealing the damage, does not use the effect yet. Which is very good because he is reading on the potential Necrofusion that Gold Rush could have. And he's gonna force the Necrofusion right now. No Shuberta. He didn't want to use Shuberta right now, so Blum Diva is also going to be on the field here. End phase. Only a Diva on the field. Very understandable though, because 
you will still have the need to negate the effect of Diva. And Kanzawa cannot pass it yet, mainly if he's playing Breakthrough Skill, because he's gonna have to rely on the trap. Crazy. She already banished once, I guess. I believe you're right. If we're talking about the blue one. Exactly, he did a long time ago. So turn two, that was the banishing. But anyways, gets destroyed by the Deva. So Schubert is in the grave, and that's two Divas on the field, but one has two set cards. Now it's going to be an end turn for Kanzawa here. Sending one card on the side of Gold Rush. Gonna be the turn for Kanzawa. Using Skill Prisoner immediately. Fair enough, he wanted to get all the traps on the field, hence why he uses Skill Prisoner. So I do believe similar play, yes indeed, Goldor sets another con on the field. Passing the turn again, though. Same thing goes for Gold Rush. We're at turn 22 and the duel has not ended. That's a crazy thing, though. This is a duel to see which Melodius is actually going to remain on today's war. Now I don't think it is going to be the only Melodius we see from both teams, we will be able to see more for sure. So Gold Rush sets another card again. He's taking some time to think this through. Especially if he has the breakthrough skill, he will be at some point using it. But it seems he passes the turn. It doesn't seem to be the turn to attack. Going to be Gold Rush's turn. Who actually sets a card and ends the turn as well? Alright, Kanzawa normal summons the score and will be using From Sun Stress to Maestro. So now he gets the shopping now. I'm using the effect, of course, to get back the score. Oh, 
Alright, he's declaring the battle phase, which I guess will be to just destroy the phase on. And now the score is actually going to be destroyed. I wonder why he said the score on the side of Gold Rush. Because you usually keep score. You usually keep score in the hand to reduce the attack and defense at some point. Or you can use it to combine it with the skill from Sun Stress to Maestra. Like basically what Kenzawa has done. So Necrofusion is going to be used on the side of Kanzawa, but Brenthus Kill is going to come. Uh -huh. So he has done... Interesting. So because I was starting off place, he now uses the MST that eventually is going to destroy our first movement solo. It sure is, I bet it sure is. So now going for the battle phase attacks first with the Bloom Diva. No, he's able to use breakthrough skill. Does Gold Rush also have it? Is the question. He will eventually need another card to be able to negate the monster's effect. And also using the score just in case there's another card that will aim trap Kanzawa. Shapina attacking. And that is actually going to be a Soprano, but not enough. The score is going to come in. I do believe three scores has been already used. One of them is banished. Two shall be normally in the grave. So Kanzawa has been able to clear the board, but is this going to be enough though? He has one card remaining in his deck. Okay. Very interesting what's going on. So he uses the breakthrough skill to force the effect of Super Talk to be used. And he had the super team body, gets back the diva on the field. And now it depends on how many sets Goldorus is going to be pitting. Because that last turn is going to be the last offensive uh, play from Kanzawa because we know he has a breakthrough skill also in the graveyard that he used on the previous turn. And that will decide the, the duel. Right, three set cards goes for the Book of Moon. Uses it on Shoberta to reset the effect, use it again. course because you have Shopina on the field you can use her effect to get back the score he has to go all in against three potential back rows
or attacking first with the diva the breakthrough skill is gonna come in but of course there's the score in hand so Kanzawa has to use it anyway reduce the attack and defense skill prisoner is going to come in so he is not affected by the score or is it no he is affected eventually because it has to be from an effect for a monster effect on the field and he is going to take the win by having zero cards in the deck Kanzawa remains with his melodious and that is going to be a two to one what a duel this one was oh my jesus that mirror was very crazy i gotta tell you that I cannot believe this. <laughs> what is this coming fast? Let me read this. I've never read this before. Alright, let me have fun. So I went to the restroom, then went to get some snacks, then completed a nail hour delivery with my truck, and also landed on the International Space Station. And this melodious mirror match is yet to finish. <laughs> God damn it. Sounds like Christian, by the way. The same story can be told. So now Gold Rush is out, and we're gonna be waiting for the next player on the side of X Factors. Man, honestly, I'm, I, I've been left speechless with this duel. That was. That was a very very good duel of patience and knowing if you have all the cards needed to be able to potentially do lethal. Like despite the fact that you have some mirror matches, there's still going to be some of them that are like very interesting because sometimes you don't have the same cards, same amount of cards in a deck. And it just depends on like the cards that you decided to put in a deck, and that can affect so much the issue of the duel. Also, I'm just going to be changing this for the moment because we're going to be uh, waiting for the next player on X Factor's side. Two points so far for Genkai Code and one for X Factors. That was a very long duel, but of course that was due to the fact that it is, it is a mirror match. I think the next player is in. Alright, yes, he is in. We're just gonna go straight in. Smug is going to be the next player. Alright, so going in with a harpy on the top. So first turn is actually going to go for Smug. Right, so let's see what is he eventually going to go for. Because ideal turn for Harpy against Melodious will be second turn. So you can destroy the spell transfer on the opponent. He's just going to set two cards, take the time. He's not going to summon anything. I turn off Kanzawa. 
going to be normal summoning Sonata. Of course, to use the skill. Does he want to? He's hitting two cards, does not want to use the skill, yet he's just going to attack. So it either means he got the Maestra or the two Maestra in hand, or maybe he just doesn't want to use it. It's one of the two. No, the Perfumer is going to be normal summoned, and due to the field spell, you can destroy one of the spell traps. It goes for the middle one. And that's going to be a breakthrough skill, but if there's any Swallow's Nest, you could be able to dodge the negation. Or... Let me see, yeah. That was actually interesting, I just realized that Perfumer did not use the effect. I just realized that, so he just normal summoned it. So I guess maybe he's saving in case there's another spell trap that gets to be used. And the moment he does another Swallow's Nest, maybe he draws a card. That's maybe it. So he does use Swallow's Nest right now. And he went for Oracle out of all the cards. Interesting. So now the Book of Moon is forced. And he ends the turn right now. But another end of turn as well for Kanza was going on. So that's giving another chance to Smog to potentially go for lethal. Summoning Heart Beast. I still think there's a Negotist that has been used as a bait, like one of the phase zones, but no, it's going to be the one up. And that is GG. What else can I comment? Bounces back the monster score cannot use its effect. It's only while you have a melody or something here. And GG. Also has a feather as comma. <laughs> he had the feather as hidden. Alright. Well, we do be having a smuggy face behind the screen for sure. And anyways, that's going to be a point again for X-Factor. So we are back on a 2-2 score here. So Smog is going to remain with the same deck. Because that was no out. We'll have to see another player from Genkai Code.
we are back. We have the next player on the table. And that is going to be Kuririn. Let's just hop in. Alright, Sartorius Kumar on the bottom. Uh huh. Marine says Basil Lalima is a level 4 2100 defense monster we want to see in Duel Links. I see a Farfa fan in the chat. <laughs> I don't know much about Marine says, but all I remember is one meme about the archetype with Farfa. That's all I remember. But I do believe otherwise, genuinely talking, that the archetype is good, but I don't know much what it does. Otherwise, first turn goes for Smog. Again. This is so interesting because I have no idea what deck Korean is playing. Because if, if this is Light Bearer, which I'll have to verify. Yeah, eventually it's going to be a light barrier we see from Kuririn. in. Alright, sending a monster. And sending one card. So that definitively is not what I thought. Wait, I don't remember. Does he have Master of Fusion? Nah, nah, wait, 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 wait. Does Sartorius have Master of Fusion? If anybody can answer that. I... Alright, let, let me see if I can't find it in the Google, because this is honestly a huge surprise, I've never seen that before. What the hell? I mean, I do believe it is what I think it is, so it's Artorius. Alright, so so far doing the classic play thanks to the bird. I don't know, Shells, this is crazy for sure. Maybe it's another skill instead of the... Like, it could not be Master of Fusion, but it could be another one. Who knows? Uh, because I'm getting a lot of surprise, I'm trying to see what skill this could be. This is weird. It's very interesting. Arcana Swap. I've never seen that version. If it is Arcana Swap, that's something I've never seen before. Then thank you both Steven and and Charles. So you can swap all Temperance for other random cards from deck. Okay. Okay, that makes sense then. That makes sense why he uses that. Man, that's crazy. I've never seen this version before. That was very interesting, okay. Now indeed, I think he must be playing 3 Temperance if that's the case, because in case he does have a break, he could say, well, I switch to the 3 cards or 2 of them, and he gets all the cards, which is eventually useful if you want to get more plays with Lunalite. But can only use it on turn 1. If you don't have Temperance, you can't use it past... Okay, I see. I don't know about the PTH, yeah. Right, so now he's going to be making a fusion right now. I'm gonna go for the Cat Dancer. 
And with Butterfly, yes, you can special summon again. And that's gonna be lethal anyways. Lunalite is going to be taking the point here, so three points for Genkai Code so far. And we move on. No, Smoke has to go for the next deck. Alright, so. First point for Kuririn. First loss for Smog. There's always some funny stuff, like, because I'm playing in another league, I get sometimes to see some teams with, like, funny stuff. Um, I need to remember, because I've seen one team that has played Lunalite with Attack Charge. And I was like, these boys are just searching for an easy lethal. But that was very funny to see that. Attack Charge in a Lunalite is just, I don't know, pretty finicky. But our kind of swap is something definitively interesting. That's some new knowledge I'll have to <laughs> to write it in my book for sure. Right, I remember which team actually has used attack charge. That was Glance out of all the teams. And lot of mores. All right, let us see. Yamiyugi is going to be on top, so I would bet that this is Thunder Dragon, but it could also be Gaia. So twenty cards. And first turn goes for Smug again, setting one card and two cards. Actually, I'm speaking fast because I almost forgot that could also be Yosenju. That could still be Yosenju, what we get to see from Smug. So going for an instant Saber Dancer here. And yes, here's the butterfly, so he's gonna be able to get that for a thousand here, but is, is this going to be enough? It actually is going to be enough. Well, I'm still going to bet that was a uh, Yosenju. <laughs> Jeez. Well, it's on four to two. The smog is gonna be out. Good eating remains on the field with Luna Light. Now, if that was a drowning, that will have been huge for sure. <laughs> but that also will mean that I guess Yusenju will have the lethal next turn, maybe. But yeah, Drowning was definitely needed, that Butterfly was here for game.
Alright, so so far I'm just going to be waiting for the next player on X Factor's side. Now they have to ideally counter the Luna Light. And I do bet they do have another alternative instead of Yosenju here. Unless they do have another Yosenju, which maybe they will send it. But let's see. Alright, we're back in. And let's just spectate immediately. We're gonna have Tsukune on the table. Alright, yeah, third choice here. They're going to be sending a Melodius to be able to counter the Luna Light. So first turn is going for Tsukune. So he should be able to get eventually the classic setup for Melodius here. And ideally get the Blum Div on the field. Well, I'd say I'm speaking too fast because you have to think that Blum Div is indeed the way out against Luna Light, but there is also the fact that if you have any monster that gets to negate the effect from Blom Diva, which I'm talking about the Tiger King, then goodbye to Blom Diva. All the scores are uh, one of these cards that actually saves you from that. Uh, he opens with the first movement. He gets a soprano on the field, tributes it using the skill, and will get Chopin. I still don't think we've seen anyone playing Mozarta yet, but it's not one of these cards you use often. But he actually plays Mozarta. So that makes me think he has. Let's see. Okay, he has the Chopin indeed. So I was thinking you could or summon a Soprano again from your hand by using the effect of Mozarta or you use Chopina. So let's see how good it is going to pass that board. He does have the possibility to destroy the two monsters. Alright, goes for the classic tech. So set the card, open it to no timing from the opposing card. And that's going to be a free 10 key for good it in. So now he was able to get the bird.
So he went for the bird that discards the butterfly out of all the cards. Doesn't seem to be a good hand for good it in. Although, if he does a fusion, he will eventually have the materials in the graveyard, and if he wants to use the butterfly, he could, but that will not be an easy task at that point. He's gonna pass the turn by just using the bird. Normal summon for Soprano. And I do think he's gonna go for Diva right now. No, he goes for the Bloom Prima. I do think that could have happened a little bit different because eventually he could have used the effect of the Mozarta to special summon the Melodious, so the Soprano. Oh, oh my god, that actually is going to be enough for Lethal. Actually wait. Yeah, wait a second. He used Temperance too early, didn't he? I mean, unless he was like, well, I bricked her, so anyways, I'm going to um, give him the win, but... Normally, that's not lethal. Well, what can I say? So no more Lunar Light on the side of Kuririn, we have to move for his next next deck, sorry. But normally that should not have been lethal because you save Temperance after your monster is destroyed, then use it again. Now eventually he will have like 500 life points remaining, but it's still 500 life points of trying something. Otherwise, I guess they just wanted to take to the next door. Which is going to be understandable because Harpy is going to be the next deck from Good It In. Any other eyes? Not yet, maybe Turkish. I guess we could see some other eyes advance again if we see some Thunder Dragon. Also going for the Synchro right now, Feather Rest. Oracle as well. And that's gonna be an end of turn. Doesn't need to go for any other any other XCs because rest restricts you from doing any special summon except for wind monsters. I 
well, you could actually do a second Cyber Slash if you wanted as well. That's another thing you could have gone for. And the first movement solo is going to be used on the side of the screen. Skill. And it's going to be either Mozarta or Chopina, depending on the hand you have. If he is cheeky enough, he will have gone for Mozarta if he has the Soprano in hand, but if he doesn't, Chopina is going to still be the best alternative. Well, actually, he had. Well, actually, there's another element that could depend because it is the fact that if you have Mozarta in hand, you actually can only special summon Shopina. But otherwise, you go for Mozarta. Mozarta special summons Soprano. Soprano gets back the score. And the man goes for the Bloom Prima with quite an attack boost here to be able to defeat all the monsters on the field. That actually is going to be enough. Thanks to the score, that's going to be lethal. And has a second one. Jeez. And we're pretty fast back to a 4 4 score, I guess. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, never ending Melamira, yeah. <laughs> now I wonder if we're going to see this again. And I guess not. So that war is so far very close, actually. So far we are 4 4. And so good night so far streaking, we're all gonna have to wait for the next player on the side of Genkai Code. So the next player joined the room. Let's see who it is it's going to be. Going to be all aim. Alright, we are in immediately. Let's go. Alright, so they, they do send another Harpy immediately in hope to counter again the Melodius, although I don't understand their position.
Alright, so I was waiting for the drop of the music roll, but here the thing is for Harpy player to be first turn, two perspectives. You go for all the plays to guarantee yourself by having the synchro and ideally some spell traps that are set. Else you take your time, set some spell traps, and wait before doing the offensive. So he begins, goes for Perfuma. So definitely going for the Synchro here. Cyber Slash. He does have two set cards, which is going to be pretty good for the Harpy player. And now it is going to be the turn of Tsukune. It all depends on the opener. <laughs> I love your hand, Sandras. Yeah, just tell him that this is a tournament or a league instead of a dual room. But I guess I don't know. There's always two sides. I think some of the people, I guess. They like to put ID Salah, ID Room, you know, just for the meme. I will guess that. There are some clever ones, I guess, sometimes. Anywho, MST came in very fast. Destroy the face down on the middle. So, all here depends on the card that Al Ain has. Now, we know that the Forbidden Chalice got destroyed. Oh, he's going for the attack. Well, is this going to pass though? That indeed is going to be passing in. The score destroys the synchro. So turn of Al Ain, he has two cards. Now he still can respond pretty easily because there's no backer on the side of Tsukune. So it's almost as if we mirror, mirror the hand from both players compared to the previous duel. And the Lion is actually going to get a pretty good opening, gets the Perfumer on the field. at two cards and attacks again but will receive the last score so Al Ain is going to be relying on the back rows or that's GG This is very important. Is the Strike Party going to pass? It does pass. Now, what was very good here is he didn't rush on on going for the summon because the call had been a treacherous trap hole. Oh my god. He had both. Come on. <laughs> he had both. Sheesh. Well, reverting the whole duel. I do think though, any MST will have been enough for the game, because eventually the history party, if it was destroyed, that was over. Ah, so that's gonna be GG here, Harpy takes the win though.
So that's going to be 5 to 4. Alright, they're in for the next duel. We're just gonna hop in again. But actually, they did. Okay, let me do that very fast. Alright, because Tsukune is now on the bottom. On top, I'll aim remaining with Harpy. That does sound that it is going to be a mirror match. Yeah. Alright, first turn is going to go for Tsukune. Alright, classic setup here, thanks to the Chandler bringing the Perfumer against the Search. Against the rest. Classic. Everything relies on the draws that it's going to will have, because what matters is going to be how many spell traps you can get on the field to be able to defend yourself. Is it gonna have an oracle? And hello, hello, NNS. Hope you're doing good. Alright, so two set cards on the field, and an oracle, and a cyber slash. So, Kuna is looking pretty, pretty good in this position. And of course, the two Harpies Hunting Ground have been destroyed. So even better. What's also interesting is that he did not get back the Harpy's Hunting Ground, he went for the rest instead. Which is a very interesting choice but a very fair one as well. Because the field spell is for both of these players because you know both of them plays Harpy. Things could, could end up bad. So I'll aim taking the time to think for the plays. He has to play around two potential back rows. I do think it depends on the opening, but if he has a chalice, a book of moon, he will eventually use it first. But he's gonna normal summon the Oracle. Or was it special summon? Let me see. Yeah, normal summoned. Card set. Jeez. Well, I do guess at some point he's gonna bounce back the Oracle, does he? He eventually called, else he waits.
Oh, she does have a good hand so far. Gets the Perfumer on the field as well. So here for the duel, it's not really over because you have to think that there's three back rows on the side of Al Ain. And since we're talking about Harpy, there could be similarities in terms of build. Here's going on Aeon. Okay. Attacking first with the Perfumer. And Forbidden Challenge is going to be used. Does he have a reply to that? We should be in damage then. There's timing, someone has an answer. No, he's going to take the damage here. And he's now going to attack with the Cyber Slash. Now he has to bounce the monster if he wants, or he lets it alive. He lets it alive, fair enough. So now he got back the field spell. That's gonna be a lot of damage. Egotist going to be used, forcing one of the back rows, forcing the middle one. That will be a forbidden chalice. And also goes for the swallow's nest. Actually, a Swallow's Nest, what he had. Now, the Swallow's Nest is sort of going to be fine because he destroyed the field spell. And he could go for this. Well, actually, no, it's not going to change too much because if he goes for the Synchro, he has a spell to use. And what will happen is eventually going to be pretty much the same thing. So basically, so far, Alain is taking back the lead. Alright, so we know he has the rest. Eventually, he's going to be doing the synchro. What really matters is going to be what do you want to bounce? Because if he bounces the Harpy Harpist, what's going to happen is eventually he is going to allow to get more resources for Tsukune. Otherwise, if he bounces the Synchro, he can indeed destroy the Harpies, but then if it's not enough for lethal. Okay, going for the Patrash here. Not being greedy, he's going to take the time first of all, thanks to the Patrash. That is very finicky, but that is also risky at the same time. We'll see what's gonna happen though. Instant Feather Rest used on the side of Tsukune. Alright. Passes the turn. Well, 
depending on whatever is said that call BGG. Okay, and that is actually going to be lethal. Swallow's Nest was the last card phase done because we know the other one is rest. And that is actually going to be GG. So now we yet again have a differential of two points, so six to four. So Kane is gonna have to be out. And now we're waiting for the next player. As the next players in and that is going to be baby run on the table let's hop in So that eventually is going to be a harpy, but not the same skill that I have been. Normal summoning Chandler, classic stuff is going to happen. So that hazy. Well, I'm not hazy. <laughs> Italy. A very easy rest for all aim. But since only one card. Eventually, he has five cards. Any point where he has a quick spell to defend himself, he will be in a good spot. Okay, it is not going to be Harpy. That's that's something I don't know how I did not consider the fact. Like it is a new player that enters the room, and I'm like saying it's Harpy. Well, I mean, you can risk if you, if you want, but it doesn't make sense. So that's going to be Lunar Light, Master Fusion, definitely, because of Jaden. But I promise I have so much to have it. Every time I see Jaden, I'm like, the type that dance every time. Every time. It's so crazy because I want to mention that on the previous days of Duel Links, people played a lot with the tractor. So... You had decks where you play certain decks and all. But even if it's the same skill you were playing a tractor that maybe the other one didn't know. Well, some of them you could see they activate on like the first turn, but it usually gave a feeling of surprise. And I think we're lacking of that, so that's very safe. <laughs> Well, 
Hazy, the smelly rated boy. That was gonna be your title, Hazy. <laughs> I free attack though for the save the dancer. And all the classic thing is the difficulty for a Harpy player is to eventually get a way to destroy the Saber Dancer. Now, I mean, we've seen some tech from the Water player on the first, first duel. We could see the same spell that he used because that will eventually destroy the Saber Dancer. Otherwise, we could instead see the... Well, that depends on the hand he has, but we could see a setup to make the Thunder Spark Dragon. If he somehow gets that, that's gonna be a nice riddance. The problem is, by the man has three cards in hand, eventually he has to deal with some hand traps. And talking about Master Fusion, because it is eventually the skill that we will see at some point, it activates after you do... A thousand life point from your opponent, then he can use the skill to get a polymerization from nowhere. Uh, he's... He hasn't done any plays so far. But yeah, remember when Judai played Yul Luna Light in the anime? I do remember Sad and Joe. I was actually in episode 52 of GX. And anyways, channel are going through since the heart beats from the hand. I do think he's gonna have the setup because no, he just needs to get the humor. You get to search Agatis and hope for the best with the Spark Dragon. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> it took your ray. Going on in. What a mad like going for an it your ray. Okay. I have not expected that. No, it's not going to be lethal though. He's using all the effects right now. It's not lethal at all. But he's going to be able to deal a lot of damage. Well. That passed through, but he has 400 life points and Big Man can use this skill now. He oh. didn't use the skill. Well, maybe it isn't. Well, I mean, it could be Master Fusion and he just said I'm not wanting to use it, or it's just that he doesn't have it. I don't know. Yeah. The thing is that if he knows it wasn't for lethal, I will have, like, done some damage. But make enough damage to not, like, give him the, the skill, but it went for a lot of damage here. I said two Martin on the field. We're gonna see an Xyz from Baby Man. But which Xyz does he want to go? As of now, he's using the Lunar Light Fusion from his hand. Anyways, gets the Saber Dancer. Unless there's a Floodgate, I don't see any way that he wins. Yeah. Easily over. 
Yes, indeed, Buns. Alright, so Baby Mun is going to be taking the point. Yeah, for sure, for sure. The thing to take into consideration is that the players that are playing the league though, at some point they're all conscious of the league they're playing, and a lot of them are being special, others are being very strong, but there's always a lot of kinds when you watch wars or when you watch players, that at some point it also makes you introduced to some new teams or new players, that you will think, well, this guy sucks, but actually he doesn't end up sucking, he's just giving you a huge surprise because of the deck he plays or the way he plays. At some point, there's always new players that are going to come in. The difficult thing is though to welcome them. Not everyone is welcome and I think that's one downside of some parts of the competitive, but we'll still get to see some beauty with each new team that gets introduced in, for example, Team Wars. Alright, so I'll aim begin setting two cards. I have no idea what deck it is, but I'm going to guess it is Yusenju again. So Tenki is going to be used on the side of Baby Man. But is this a free Tenki? He allows the draw and sets a card. And that actually is going to be a guy where we'll get to see the Dragon Knight's nice path gets activated. That depends on the hand he has, but we never know, it could be lethal. Let's see. So here, classic search, getting the magical knight. If he does have the Fierce Knight and the Dragon Mirror, that's GG. That's all he needs for lethal. He went for the destruction. Yeah, I guess that's lethal because then if he has a Forbidden Chalice, we know that's it. And attacking on the best timing possible to use Forbidden Chalice. And that is GG. So taking out the Lunalight because of Gaia being behind. Also, I forgot to change the score. That was five on the previous duel. Now, this is going to be seven to five. So just correcting the score right now. So that's gonna be three, one, just like that. So one deck remaining for both players. I'll end with the Gaia and Baby Man now with a second deck. Let's see.
At this time, it is going to be Harpy, though. So Harpy gets the first turn, which eventually is pretty good for them. They do want to get first turn, ideally, against the Gaia to be able to uh, bounce some cards from them. So they could be in a good spot, but let's see. That's a classic turn happening right now, making the Synchro, Cyber Slash, and gets the Oracle, because he had it in hand anyways. But no Spell Trap. That is going to be some dirty damage about to happen. decision he's gonna bounce his own oracle So, so far, he added the Curse of Dragon Fire with the Galloping Gaia. Alright, Magical Knight has summoned the Curse of Dragon Fire. And now the question is which vision does he want to go? I was about to have some dub, but now the Book of Moon is fine anyways. So only one set card, but he's going to be able to put a lot of pressure for Baby Man. Because we're talking about the Magical Knight of Dragons. It is an imposing card. Unless you don't change its attack or defense, things can go bad. So instant further is to get back the Synchro 2 monsters. He's going to need a good card though eventually to be able to play around Alain's field. Going for the Harpy's Hunting Ground. 
that he eventually got back from the Oracle. He's gonna get again. Now I'm summon something goes for the Galloping Guy of Destruction, and I think that's a fair thing here. At the same time, this is going to force the effect of either the MST or the Gaia himself, which is using Renault to destroy the field spell and protect the field spell. And no, that's gonna be an end phase. This is almost the end though. Because the Galloping guy is still on the field, Alain gets back resources and eventually gets lethal. If he has already a Magical Knight, that's GG. Or if he gets a Dragon Mirror. Yep. That explains it. Gaia in a nutshell. Gaia. I use the skill. I get the galloping Gaia. GG well play. Sometimes it's like that. Even more when you have the dragon mirror. No, that's gonna be pretty imposing. Especially because Gaia in late games can be putting a lot of pressure. Uh, due to what type of hands it can get. So we'll have to see what counter x factors goes with. They have a lot of points to get back, they have a 3 point difference right now. We're talking about an 8 to 5. Is anyone playing DDD Strongberg? I've seen none yet, Dracomundo. There was uh, no... No DDD yet. I don't think a lot of people play the deck and I mean it really depends on... If you think the deck is good or not, or if you have a good uh, pair with it. Like if you have a deck that fits what you do with the DDD. And hello to you, Sung. Hope you're doing good, man. Alright, so the last player is going to join at some point, and that is going to be Saku joining. Also, no repeat from both sides, but also because most of them... I do think there was... Yeah, everyone won their first duel, I believe. Everyone won, won their first duel. By the way, how are you doing, Sun? I'm just surprised since the skill lets you skip stun by phase and you can play Stormbreak in main. The deck also has access to turn 1 Rhino Bus. Yeah, Rhino Bus you mean. Um, I mean, the deck definitely can be used in the format. I've seen a team that used it in another league but of the same format. Uh, they played that deck with um, Harpy. And I mean, it did some job, it won 3 times and then Harpy won the 7 others. On the same as that pair, but I mean, I think the deck is definitely strong in itself. It does have some weaknesses, like despite the fact that indeed you can skip the standby phase, it is weak to like spell, spell trap destruction. So eventually, if you get to destroy the Stromberg and you get some plays behind, you know how it ends. All right, so I'll aim setting two cards again, and Saku is playing Melodious. Yeah, Blom Div is a hard counter. Well, on two sides it is and it is not. It is for monsters, it is not when you get the right spell trap that actually gets uh, the way to deal against. 
very fast forbidden chalice, which is going to negate the effect from the so Shopina, sorry. So that's going to be one big attack anyways. Or not. Let's see. Now he takes the damage. Using the Galloping Gaia. And there is timing indeed. So, Mystical Space Typhoon destroying the Fear Spell very fast. Still gets the Magical Knight summoned. And he's gonna try for an attack. Yeah, gets the scorn in his face. <laughs> and hey, Punky with a raid of 12. Thank you very much for the raid. How's it going, Punky? And that's gonna be a point for Saku. So 8 to 6 here and uh, in is out. Let me just update the score. And no. Well, doing pretty good, Punky. <laughs> Anyways, now we have uh, a sponsored segment for this stream. Um, while we have a break, let's just watch it. Force returns, and the baddest villains are back and taking evil to a whole new level. That's Rick Twitler. Whatever it is you've got planned, I can definitely make it worse. Will they create an imposter among us? Probably Mika. Although it's shop, she's acting kind of sus. I say it's Miles. <laughs> Let the gaming begin. I am not happy about this. The epic Danger Force four part adventure begins Saturday at 8 7 Central, only on Nickelodeon. Well, as you can see, that is actually a new series that is actually on Nickelodeon, and that is Danger Force. So it's a new series cartoon, and pretty fun as we've seen in the clip, talking and have some references from video games such as, of course, Among Us, with the sus meme, you guys know. And it does transmit that kind of sentiment. I'm going to be waiting for the next episode, the pilot episode, which is aired yesterday. And yep, in case you guys are curious for the series, feel free to watch it as well. Seems fun. Now we're going to go back with Team Wars, because we're waiting for the next player on the side of Genkai Code. They have two players remaining, Karage-kun and So. So let's see what they're going to select as next player. A lot of melodies though as usual though. And I think it's insane, the rise of Melodious. It makes me happy to play Duel Links, not gonna lie. Because I've had the deck for a long time and it wasn't really relevant. Like there was the mini box with Melodious Ninja which people were like, it sucks. One of the worst mini boxes. What is that? And I can agree. Because if we take the perspective on like the decks you have complete, it's just not enough to make good decks. Like it's made for people to have the decks from back then. Well, Melodius was new. Melodius was actually new compared to, to Ninja, which is not new. But yeah. Melodius being meta? It is pretty awesome. And it is going to be Karage on the field, on the table, already throwing the duel. Let's hop in. He 
do it. All right, so first turn is going to go for the Harpy player. Again. Harpy loves to be first, not. They just get it. Let's see though what opening Karage is going to get. Danger Force pause, let's go! Alright, so classic setup here, thanks to the Chandler Perfumer combo. Gets also the rest, thanks to Perfumer, and has a Cyber Slash. Easy draw to cards. No, he still needs to get a lot of macro ideally. If he has one, it's not enough. If he has two, he's fine. And it does look fine. Two macros is going to be what Karaga gets. So first movement solo that brings the score on the field. Special summon Sonata, he has two muscle on the field. Almost looking fine, but it's not yet fine. Two bunkers he has to deal again, so that's one thing he has to pay attention for. Shopina was able to use the effect, gets back the score. One big issue is going to be that eventually if there's... Well, that depends on the build that we see with Harpy, but a lot of them are doing the following, which is one Egotist, one to just Trap Hole. You can still play none, go for two Egotists instead. So... It all depends on the cards that Karagi is playing. Normal summoning Soprano. Fair enough. Book of Moon is going to happen, okay. Fair choice. But who do you bounce? Level 7 for sure. Doesn't bounce. Hmm. Doesn't bounce the level 7 out of everything, actually. Eh? Wait, wait. Wait a second, was. No, no, no. It must be me dreaming, but I know the Synchro has not used the bonds. He had it. Why? I'm not gonna lie, I'm not going to understand that. Because you don't have like a lot of possibilities that someone has, let's say. To, uh, to Sonata to special summon them and then get the boost that will be almost the only way for him to get the win so Bonsai the level 7 will have been very strong because you just need to normal summon so I do believe it is a repeat and I'll tell you guys it is indeed repeat so repeat first time using the match repeat is on the side of Genkai Code and let me just put the correct score, guys. So this is an 87. And Saku has two victories, one loss for Karage. Playing again the Harpy against the first turn again. So 
That duel was very important, so I... I don't know why he didn't bounce. He's gonna have to find his way to get back. This is a very important point for him. But uh, let us see what's gonna happen, so... Classic turn, Chandler, Perfume. We all know how is this queen. So now he gets a Cyber Slash on the field. And the Feather is classic. Alright, so one, two. This time, three set cards. He is looking very good right now compared to the previous turn. Uh, previous duel, sorry. So now it is going to be the turn of Saku. There is some delay. But on which side? Probably going to be on Karage's side, I guess. Alright, so first movement going to be used to special summon the score. Okay, same opening here. That's just the beginning, same opening for Saku. So special summon the score, special summon the sonata. And now he's gonna get the Shapina again to retrieve the score. Alright, the instant TTH is gonna happen though. Alright, this time he's going to be bouncing the Shapina though. So it's not like before. There is a potential that this could be lethal. But of course it still depends on the card that Saku got. So we never know, but. It's not gonna be an easy, easy win anymore. A strong hand looking here. Chandler, Oracle, and the Cyber Slash. He's gonna go immediately for the attacks here. And that is also going to be a TTH happening. On who you do Chandler and the Cyber Slash. The question is, is this is going to be enough or not? So Solar's Nest is going to happen first. Tributes the Chandler. There is, I think, delay. That will be another swallow. Yeah, another swallow's nest behind. No, it is not. Interesting. It's not another swallow's nest. So Saku has another chance again. But that must be, I'd say, his last play. We know that he has a Shapina in hand, which is not going to be helpful. Unless he gets the Mozarta, Mozarta then special summons the Shapina from hand. So what are you going to do, Saku? Instant Book of Moon. No other move is gonna pass the turn.
So that's eventually going to be a Necrofusion. That is a very good timing as well because now he's forced to destroy his own Harpy's Hunting Run. Good move from Saku here. And now one question remains who or what Synchro XYZ go for. I personally see the win. But will he know? Well, actually... I thought I had the win, but no. He must go for another kind of setup. Mm, actually, it should be a simple one. Let's see. So making the Xyz goes for the Malevolent Sin. And of course he's gonna force the Schubert on. And this is so he's able to... To then go for the other play, but I... Don't know. I think he normal summoned already. Let's see. I know he had two monsters on the field, so he used the Yogurus. So if he has another monster in the hand, that's actually going to be lethal for Karage. Otherwise, it's not. So does Karage has it? And he does have it. Nothing is going to matter at that point. The score is not going to be enough. And that is actually going to be a point for Karage this time. So we're 9 to 7. Only one point remaining. And that's going to be the win for Genkai Code. Xfactos has it thought they have to rely on the last deck from Saku in hope to revert the duel, revert the, the whole match and actually take the win. This has been a very close war so far, so I will expect to see some more from everyone. Alright, so Saku, back on the table, pop it in again, let's go. Yeah, we'll see indeed, Jayor, this puzzle, but that's not going to be the case, I think this is a Harpy, or is it? Alright, so Saku gets the first turn. He's gonna go for the Oracle here. Rip. Yeah, mirror matches or mirror matches is not gonna be simple as well. But indeed, a lot of teams do like to send a lot of RP because it is a strong deck, especially in this meta. Solo's now is gonna be used to beat the Oracle. And goes for. A perfumer. Fair enough. And he's hurt like like this, so now we know that he has the rest already. A classic setup Cyber Slash. Rest.
Now he has to rely to get back throw. Only one. And he's gonna retrieve the Harpy's Hunting Ground. Fair enough. There's a quick spell from someone. Alright, he's gonna go for the instant book of moon here. Normal Sun Cyber Harpy Lady. That does look like a bad hand to me. And goes for a very fast battle phase, okay. Is it gonna take the damage? And that's an end of turn, oh my god. Saku has a chance to actually get lethal depending on the hand he has. Oh my. What he's going to need is have the Cyber Slash and then enough materials to, to go for the next place. So Oracle, again. No, it does not seem to be the case. He's gonna actually take the time again. Retrieve an Agudist. I don't know, that's crazy. From both sides, very bad hand. Instant TTH is happening. Ooh. And there's a Swallow's Nest from behind on the side of Karagi as well. Ooh. The TTH is not gonna be enough yet. Sheesh. There's a funny battle for you, Dalekorn. A funny one. Only one set card though, but we know he has the elegant tech this, so at some point Saku is going to be able to make something. Eh? Wait, I thought he was going to. He didn't use the elegant egotist? Attacks again? Well, at choice, I guess. It is what it is, Taiditsu. 
What else can I say? Mirror matches is something that people hate so much. No matter the archetype they hate to the hate, because it's two times this well, the same deck, just seen on both sides. So they're very long matches. So he does summon again and up their Oracle, my god. It has been, I want to say it has been three times on the side of Saku that he normal summoned the Oracle. This is something I don't think I've ever seen before. Three normal summon Oracle. Beautiful. But anyways, it really depends on what kind of opening Saku gets. Because it doesn't seem he has a lethal, he's gonna play differently. And I do believe there's no trap if I check on the other side. Yeah, no trap. So eventually, Karage could have the TTH. You never know. Goes for the Patriarch. Mm. And it passes as well. The Patriarch went in. Saka's going to rely a lot on the Patriarch. And it all depends on the set card as well because it does not seem to be a Book of Moon. But it could be. I don't know, this is a funny duel. RP hunting ground, has the patch charge as well, forcing a TTH. Oh, I, uh... and the TTH came. Mama, I don't know what's gonna happen in the rest of the duel. But that's not gonna end up well. Oh, my Jesus. Well, the worst part is the, um, the piece, okay, on both sides it is actually, on both sides. So let's see, so the field spell from Karage gets to be active first, Tag is the trap. No, the one from Saku. Gets to destroy both cards, gonna go for the Book of Moon. Is this going to be enough? No! Swallow's Nest is gonna react first. True, Jayor. It's very much that. I got TTH. I win. Skills. It's honestly sad that this card is not banned yet. Like, I think TTH has been overused for so many times. Like, for many years, since 2018, since this card popped off, people have been abusing TTH. It's just insane. Very, very insane. So now he has the Oracle, has to destroy his own spell. Can actually get it back if he wants by the effect of the Oracle. Bro, 
an Egotus happening? Yeah, especially with Bomarond, it got even worse. Well, I think there's always a point when you talk about meta where you have like two staples or three that combine together that are just very annoying. And the MST BOM is just, I think, the strongest combination I've seen in a long time for most of the games. Back then, I will think that Cosmic Cyclone TTH was also very strong. Um, another combination that was strong is the Mole who, that was like back when you had, uh, how is it called, Element Saber that was strong. So Mole who with the Canadia Floodgates, that was insanity, that was insanity honestly. But yeah, things like that, I don't know, all this has been cancelled. And now the big issue is that Saka is going to hope to deal with the Panthers, but I don't think he has any out against unless he's maybe waiting for it before. I also need to check back because I don't remember what card he drew. Yeah, he drew for rest on the side of Karage. He will go for the battle phase eventually. And the attack actually passes. Oh my god, yeah. Call cool, VGG. Haystrack party came in. Is this enough? It is. Hysteric Party, which is going to be enough for game. Gotta get taking the last point. So, 10 to 7. That war, that war was something else. Being up to both teams for sure. And congratulations to Genkai Code for taking the win on today's match. Well, that for sure was a war. Started very close and almost felt that they could get on a very close end with the last duel. And yeah, what else can I say? Genkai Code is looking pretty good. They would want though to get two more wins ideally to qualify for playoffs. For X Factors. Actually, I don't know. Because it is still possible with a score of six wins and four loss. But they will have to rely on the run differential. But who knows, we'll see. Anyways, for me, that is it. Thank you very much guys for watching. And as usual, follow Dueling Steam Wars. And feel free to join the Discord server if you want to get more information about the next wars. And see maybe new teams and all that. And feel free also to check the YouTube channel if you want to see back the streams. From all these uh, wars that has been casted. And to me, that's it. I'm just going to be asking Hazy if he wants to go for a raid or that's the end. And then I'll leave you guys out because I don't know. I think there's another official game about to happen at some point. Right. Time for me to go. See you guys then.